Is bigger really better? In today's video, I'm going to be comparing a 4 inch, a 6 inch, and an 8 inch telescope to see what deep sky wonders each of them are capable of capturing. Over the last 7 months, I've been testing each of them out whilst also utilizing some of their unique accessories, such as the Asgar 103's 0.6x reducer, which makes it a very fast telescope. And never before have I owned a refractor telescope as stupendously large as the Asgar 185. Costing over 5,000 British pounds and weighing almost 20 kilograms, I'd expect that this scope will let me see the aliens on the moon Europa. So let's see what they can capture. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. To start off with, I'm going to be reviewing the cheapest telescope of the range, the Ascar 103. Much like all of the other telescopes in this range, you can buy a 0.8 times reducer and or a 1 times flattener to complement it. But here's the really unique aspect when it comes to the Ascar 103. You can also purchase a 0.6 times reducer that gives this scope a focal length of 420 millimeters and an F ratio of 4.0, which is really fast. It's worth pointing out at this point that although this telescope is just under 1,000 pounds, this particular reducer will set you back another 300 pounds. And to be completely honest with you, it's not worth it particularly when it comes to astrophotography. Unfortunately, the quality of the images suffer thanks to the 0.6x reduction. Lots of the images start to feature stars with magenta rings. Visually observing for a scope is fine, it's an enjoyable experience, but since I started imaging with the Ascar 103 telescope first and the 0.6x reducer already attached, I immediately had the fear of, are these telescopes rubbish? But it turns out, without the 0.6x reducer, the telescope is extremely capable and produces especially nice images considering its price tag. So the Ascar 103 gets a tick in my book, but I wouldn't invest in a 0.6x reducer, but that's just my opinion. Moving on to its slightly bigger brother, the Ascar 140, I decided to also purchase the one times flattener to accompany it in my explorations. Especially since I was going to be testing this telescope out with this ginormous full frame sensor in the ASI 6200MC. Yeah. With a sensor this big, there is no place to hide any dodgy stars. It's time to find out if there's a reason these telescopes are so cheap. The company that makes these telescopes, Ascar, does say that the telescope is suitable for full frame sensors, but let's see how true that statement is. I must admit, I'm surprised by the quality, especially on the edges of the images. These are the raw stack shots, and as you can see from its corners, the stars look a very healthy shape. Overall, it is a really nice telescope. I'm very happy with the Ascar 140, and out of the three telescopes, this is the one that I've spent the most time with, and based on these images, you can see why. So I think given the price tag, size and image quality produced on the Ascar 140, I may have found a sweet spot for us amateur astrophotographers who have a more than modest budget and are looking for a large and capable refractor telescope. With a refractor this size, it's even viable to take images and videos of the planets. Videos that are in fact of a very high quality, such as these. But I didn't stop there. I was obsessed with this range of Ascar telescopes and decided to do something I'd never done before and purchased an absolutely gargantuan monster of a telescope. Right, so we've had big, we've had bigger, and yet surprisingly, somehow, this isn't the biggest. Yeah, <laughs> as of the time of releasing this video, there is actually a model that's even bigger than this called the Ascar 203. Now, I won't be reviewing that for multiple reasons, the main one being due to the expense of the telescope, but the secondary reason, which is more than adequate, is because of the colossal weight of the telescope. I mean, look at this one here. It is absolutely huge. It is pretty much the length of my entire wingspan, especially once we get a camera attached to this. And then in terms of weight, I mean, at 18 kilograms, it really is pushing the limit of most traditional mounts. Certainly pushing the limits of a strain wave mount like the EM31 Pro here, which can handle payloads of up to 20 kilograms. So because of this telescope, we are very much putting this to a stress test. But I am quite confident that it's going to be more than capable of doing so. In fact, I'm so confident that, as you can see, I've attached a bunch of different accessories. Just at the very back here, I have an Optolong L Ultimate filter. When using this filter, it is supposedly going to cut through a large chunk of it and allow me to image the night sky. And that is doubly important tonight, because tonight is a full moon, which, as far as deep sky imaging goes, is pretty much the worst time ever to image the night sky. Yeah, I'm not going to say it's pointless, but compared to the images that you achieve under moonless skies, they just look rubbish. The goal that I'm hoping to achieve tonight is I want to image the same objects with the filter attached. So without a further ado, we've seen the Ascar 103, we've seen the Ascar 140. Now let's see what the Ascar 185 can really do.
Right, so there we go. These are the results achieved after several months of using this range of Ascar telescopes. And here are my final thoughts and ratings. I think the Ascar 103 is an absolute steal at 999 British pounds. A four inch triplet refractor telescope at this price feels like a no brainer. Like I said earlier, I was very worried when the images I first captured with a telescope were filled with magenta ring stars. So steering clear of the unique 0.6 times reducer would be my best bet. Most experienced astrophotographers will tell you that telescopes like this aren't designed to have their focal ratio be this low. It does all sorts of weird things to the image. But normally, as just a £999 scope that it is, it takes some pretty special images. So factoring in the price, it gets a 7.8 rating from me. Next was actually my favourite scope of the three. I think I'll start referring to the Ascar 140 as the Goldilocks scope, simply because it's not too big, it's not too small, it's just right. Its huge aperture means that it makes light work of imaging the most popular deep sky objects, but it can also handle imaging the planets, which makes this scope a very good comparison for the Celestron 8-inch Edge HD for £1,899. I did have the two of these telescopes imaging the same planet at the same time side by side. Now presented with these planetary imaging comparisons, I think I'd still say that the C8 Edge HD is the favourite. But for that telescope, planetary imaging is its main purpose. I personally still prefer the Ascar 140 over it when it comes to imaging the entirety of our night sky. So yeah, it's definitely my favourite. It sits right there in a sweet spot, and that's why I'm giving it a 9.1 rating out of 10. Which then leaves us with only the biggest telescope left to discuss. Now, given that the question at the start of this episode was, is bigger always better, and the Ascar 103 and Ascar 140 have had increasingly higher ratings, what can we expect from the Ascar 185? Well, the bottom line in terms of my user experience is this telescope is just about too big for its own good. What I mean by that is that with the accessories and the guide scope attached to the telescope, it is knocking right on the door of the AM5N or the EM31 Pro mount's payload capabilities, which are both stated to be 20 kilograms. Perhaps this wouldn't be as noticeable or as concerning if the sheer size of this telescope wasn't so enormous. It's a true spectacle that without a doubt captures the best quality images of the entire lineup. It's simple physics. The larger aperture of the same design telescope means it has increased light gathering capabilities and therefore can capture more detailed images of the night sky. So here's the thing, even though the Ascar 185 is the most powerful of the three telescopes, I wouldn't actually say that the improvement in image quality is significant enough for me to choose it over the Ascar 140 or the Ascar 103. Therefore, I think a 7.6 rating is well deserved. And I mean, look, if we go for a comparison of the relative light gathering capabilities of each of the scopes, then we're looking at five times the cost of the Ascar 103 for the 185, with just 3.23 times multiplier in terms of light gathering capabilities. As for the Ascar 140, it's about a 75% increase in light gathering for two and a half times the cost. So this is the viewpoint that I'm taking for this video. Yes, bigger is always going to be better, but in terms of user experience and pound for pound value, no. If we add the top of the line Ascar 203 to the mix, then this becomes even more apparent. This enormous scope has only just been released and it truly is the monster of this family. Priced at just under 8,000 British pounds, it's almost twice the aperture size of our beginner telescope, the Ascar 103. So the Ascar 203 is eight times the cost of the Ascar 103 with four times the light gathering capabilities. Meanwhile, the Ascar 140 is four times cheaper than the Ascar 203 with just less than half the light gathering capabilities. So these two metrics don't exactly increase in line with each other, but that's because of different variables that have to be accounted for, such as manufacturing costs. Yeah, you'll be able to decide for yourself what the max payload of a telescope is that you'll be willing to handle, but at 23.5 kilograms, the Ascar 203 is the last thing I'd be looking to try and place on my mounts on a dark, cold night in the middle of winter. Whereas even a little baby mount, like the Jouet 14, can handle the payload of the Ascar 140, provided you use a counterweight. In conclusion, a very good line of budget-friendly triplet telescopes released from Ascar. If you're interested in checking out any of them for yourself, then be sure to click one of the links listed in the description below. And make sure you're subscribed for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.